You guys know that, you know, if you do the work, you work hard enough, dreams come true. You know that, we all know that. But hopefully what you get from tonight is the understanding that um, those times when you get up early and you work hard, those times when you stay up late and you work hard, those times when you don't feel like working, you're too tired, you don't want to push yourself, but you do it anyway. That is actually the dream. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. And if you guys can understand that, then what you'll see happen is that you won't accomplish your dreams. Your dreams won't come true. Something greater will. I play to figure things out. I play to learn something. Right? Because I think if you, if you play with a fear of failure or you play with a will to win or that supersedes your fear of failure, I think it's a weakness either way. Right? Because if you, if you play with the fear, fear of failing, you'll have the pressure on yourself to play, you know, to capitulate to that fear. If you play with the sense of I want to win, I want to win, then you have the fear of what happens if you don't. But if you find common ground in the middle, in the center, then it doesn't matter. You're unfazed by either. Right? That enables you to really just stay in the moment, stay connected to it and not feel anything other than what's in front of you. So you know, I try to just be dead center. So if you fail on Monday, the only way it's a failure on Monday is if you decide to not progress from that, right? So, that, so to me, that's why failure is non-existent. Because you know, if I fail today, I, okay, I'm gonna learn something from that failure and I'm gonna try again on Tuesday. What I've learned is to always keep going. Always, you know, there's, there's been times, particularly early in my career, where it just feels like this is the end. Um, but what I've come to find out is that, you know, no matter what happens, the storm eventually ends. And when the storm does end, you want to make sure that you're ready. And so uh, I've really learned to put one foot in front of the other, uh, good, bad, or indifferent, because eventually that storm passes. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, uh, to be a sponge. But you always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league. But you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport that me coming in at 17, I hated when like my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow. Right? Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice. I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know, Nick Van Exel would come up and say, Are you okay? I'm like, motherfucker, what? <laughs> Imagine you wake up at three, you train at four, you go four to six, come home, breakfast, relax, so so, blah, blah, blah. now you're back at it again, nine to 11, right? You relax and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, two to four, and now you're back at it again, you know, seven to nine. Look how much more training I have done by simply starting at four, right? And so now you do that and as the years go on, the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. And by year five or six, it doesn't matter how, what kind of work they do in the summer, they're never going to catch up because they're five years behind. <laughs> right? So it makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work in. We're not on the stage just because of talent or ability. We're up here because of 4 a.m. We're up here because of two-a-days or five-a-days. We're up here because we had a dream and let nothing stand in our way. If anything tried to bring us down, we used it to make us strong. We were never satisfied, never finished, will never be retired. My high school English teacher, Mr. Fisk, uh, actually paid attention one time in class. And, and he said, he had this beautiful quote, and, he, and it read, rest at the end, not in the middle. And I took that to heart. I believe there's time for resting at the end, but for me, that time is not now, but I'm far from done. My next dream is to be honored one day for inspiring the next generation of athletes to have a dream, sacrifice for it, and never ever rest in the middle. I switch my mode into something else, right? For me, it's the equivalent of Maximus, Desmus, Meridius, and Gladiator picking up the dirt, smelling the dirt, it's go time. So that was my mental switch. It was like an actor getting ready for a film. You gotta put yourself in that cage. When you're in that cage, you are that character. And then when you leave there, it's something completely different. But when I'm in that cage, bro, don't fucking touch me. Don't talk to me. Just <laughs> leave me alone. But once you retire, you don't have that source of income that's coming in, right? So even if you save over a 15 year career, if your spending habits remain the same, eventually that well's gonna run dry. 
Right, so unfortunately for us athletes, retirement age is 32, 34, if you're lucky, 37 like myself, what comes next? Right, so the question needs to be, what comes next? What can I do? What is my passion? Not what, where I can create the most value or generate the most revenue, but what is my next passion? When you find that next passion, everything else will make sense. But that's the hardest part for us.